Hello, I'm Mark Schultz with Ohio State University Extension. Today I'm out at the Western Agricultural Research Center near South Charleston, Ohio, and I'm going to discuss some of the newer alfalfa genetics, the main ones that have come on the market in recent years. I'll be talking about Roundup Ready alfalfa, varieties selected for high forage quality. The newest uh, improvement has been the reduced lignin alfalfa, genetically engineered for lower lignin concentrations. And I'll also touch on potato leafhopper resistant alfalfas. Alfalfa breeders, primarily in the private companies, have been working hard for many years to improve alfalfa. The alfalfa genetics are very complicated. It's been difficult to increase the yield potential, but they've done a tremendous job in protecting the yield that we do have. So for many years, they concentrated on multiple disease resistance, and this resulted in protecting the alfalfa from pathogens that are devastating to the plant that reduce stand and eventually then of course reduce yield. A number of years ago as shown in this graphic we evaluated the best alfalfa varieties from different decades. Initially everything was equal but as the stand age over years the old varieties were taken out by different diseases they lost a tremendous amount of stand and really were unproductive. They, you would have plowed those stands up. The newest varieties, though, maintain their stand much longer, and they do maintain yield for a longer period of time than the very old ones. Now, recently, they've been working on other traits, and the genetic engineered traits are one of the big ones they've been working on. The first one, of course, was Roundup Ready, and this was released a number of years ago. It's been on the market. Roundup Ready is really a nice tool for weed control. Right here beside me is Roundup Ready alfalfa, and over on this side is, is non-Roundup Ready. You can't see a difference right now. This stand was established last August, and last fall we had a lot of winter annuals come in, and so I can show you a picture from earlier in May where the side over that was not Roundup Ready had a lot of winter annuals coming in, a lot of shepherd's purse, especially in the gaps between the plots, but even also in the plots. Where we had sprayed Roundup in the fall, there it was completely clean. So it's a very nice tool, especially during stand establishment. The other thing that's nice about the Roundup, you don't have to wait for that time when you can apply the conventional herbicides. So most of the herbicides that we have, you have to wait until the alfalfa seedling has at least two trifoliate leaves. So what happens in the spring with conventional alfalfa is a lot of times it's cold, it's wet, the stand starts out slower, but the weeds don't seem to be slowed down by that. And by the time we can spray the alfalfa at two to three trifoliates, sometimes we don't have as good a control with those herbicides. Where Roundup, we could hit it earlier. In fact, you wanna hit it very early to take out the small percentage of alfalfa plants that are susceptible to Roundup. So by doing that, we can clean up these fields and we don't have that problem of waiting for the alfalfa to get to the right stage and the weeds getting ahead of us. So once you establish a clean stand with Roundup and Roundup Ready Alfalfa, you may not need the Roundup for a couple years. In fact, you may not need it until into the third and fourth year of the stand when perennials start to come in, and then it's a very useful tool for taking out perennials like dandelion, thistle, and dock. We, we can grow alfalfa without it. We've done that for years but it is a very nice tool if having very clean alfalfa is important to you. Now, another type of alfalfa that you'll see marketed is high quality alfalfa, selected for higher nutritive value. It's a hard trait to breed into the crop. Again, alfalfa genetics are very complicated. Now these high quality alfalfas, the research that I have seen, the data I've seen comparing them to just a normal newer alfalfa, 
shows that their advantage in nutritive value really isn't that consistent and it's not that large. Now the newer genetically engineered reduced lignin alfalfas are definitely a positive step in improving nutritive value. A group of scientists, a consortium of scientists from private and public sectors got together and developed these alfalfas. They genetically engineered the alfalfa to produce a little less lignin. Lignin is important to the plant. It's a complex structural polymer. It's important for the plant standing upright, for water transport, for protection against diseases and pests, so we can't eliminate it. The problem with lignin is that it's indigestible in the rumen. And so that reduces our fiber digestibility, which reduces the intake and thus animal performance. So a small improvement in lignin concentration, lowering it, can increase our fiber digestibility. We were involved in a six state study from Pennsylvania all the way out to Northern California, including a site right here in South Charleston. And we evaluated these a reduced lignin alfalfa variety, which by the way is marketed, the newest, the ones that were first released are marketed as Harv Extra brand. So we compared it to, to the standard non-reduced lignin alfalfas. The Harv Extra, when compared to the non-reduced lignin alfalfa varieties, harvested at the same time, was always lower in lignin, consistently across all harvests throughout the growth cycle, which increased the fiber digestibility anywhere from two to five percentage units. A separate study in Minnesota showed the same results. Our first study showed a, a smaller, a little bit of a re yield reduction with the reduced lignin, but more recent studies with the second releases of the Harv Extra varieties, uh, the yield has been very comparable to other alfalfas. So if you harvest on the same day, you're gonna get higher nutritive value with the reduced lignin, no question about it, okay? Now, the other way we could use this, though, is a lot of times our harvests get delayed here in our region with the weather. And so we looked at how long it would take for the reduced lignin variety to end up with the same quality as the traditional variety when the harvest was delayed. So we compared harvest from 28 days to 33 and, and 38 day harvest intervals. Minnesota did a, a in a separate study, did a, a, a similar thing. It takes about eight to 11 days for the reduced lignin to lower in quality to the point of the standard alfalfas, say eight to 11 days earlier, okay? So when you're delayed harvest, you can still end up with something that was fairly comparable to a standard alfalfa harvested on time. Meanwhile, it's gaining yield. So the Minnesota study showed that with about equal quality, you could delay harvesting Harv Extra by say five days and you would get a 21% yield increase. In our study, across all those six states, if we delayed 10 days, our fiber digestibility was equal, as shown in this graphic, and our yield had increased by 18% during those 10 days. So that's the beauty of this reduced lignin that I see, is the, the more flexibility it's going to provide to obtain alfalfa of really good quality. So, we could have longer harvest intervals, perhaps even cut out a whole cutting. If you're cutting intensively for dairy, five cuts per, per year, you could easily cut that back to four cuttings, have the same nutritive value, the same fiber digestibility, and probably higher yield, and probably a little longer stand life. Less trips over the field, 
is doing less compaction damage and you're saving money, the cost of one whole harvest per year. So that's where I see reduced lignin really fitting in. Okay, now we're gonna move to a different uh, field site. I'm going to show you potato leaf hopper resistant alfalfas compared to susceptible side by side. Every summer in Ohio, we have potato leaf hopper outbreaks. And we saw a lot of hopper burn damage like this in alfalfa fields all across the state this summer. By the time you see this kind of hopper burn damage, yield has been reduced and the crude protein is lower as well. The populations of this pest were very high this summer. We've been testing potato leaf hopper resistant alfalfa varieties for about 24 years now. The resistant varieties are planted right next to susceptibles and no insecticide is applied. The resistant varieties dramatically reduce the yield losses in the absence of the insecticide treatment. The height of the susceptible variety in this trial is about 12 inches tall, while the resistant next to it is 20 inches tall. Compared with the susceptibles, you can see there is no hopper burn in the resistant varieties in these trials. When leaf hoppers are not present, like in the spring in the first cutting, or when spraying on time with an insecticide, the resistant varieties will yield about 5 to 6 percent less than a good susceptible variety that is not damaged by the leaf hopper. But you can lose that 5 to 6 percent yield advantage with the susceptibles if you are just one week late in applying an insecticide when it's needed. So the resistant varieties are a great option if you often find yourself not getting insecticides applied on time. They are definitely a good option for organic producers. But when selecting a leafhopper resistant variety, always ask to see yield data from trials like this one where they are compared with a good susceptible check variety in the absence of insecticides. Not all resistant varieties are created equal. So that concludes our discussion today about the new alfalfa genetics. I hope I've given you some things to take a hard look at. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me or one of your extension educators in your county. Thank you very much. I'm Mark Schultz with Ohio State University Extension.